why are the women oppressed? They are not. But if you understand something, and let me spend a moment since we opened that can, let's try and inshallah serve it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. In Islam, a man is supposed to be looking after the women whom he is the guardian of. The closest male relative is supposed to be providing the basics for the females whom he is the closest to in terms of the Sharia. It's either a husband or an adult son or a father or a brother if those are non-existent, meaning stage by stage depending. If one is not there, then it goes to the other. If one has run away from his duty, it goes to the other. It doesn't mean you leave her on the street and so on. So a woman in actual fact does not really need money for anything that is necessity. If she has money, it's token for her own, I would term luxury. It means it's just hers. She doesn't actually have to look after someone with that wealth. She doesn't actually have to have, she's got no duties besides zakah to be paid with that wealth. But a man, if he has wealth, he's got duties, obligations. Obligations for what? Obligations upon those whom he is the guardian of, his children, his wife, maybe his mother, if he is the son and so on. And if the father is not around and what have you. So there are so many obligations. So by right, a woman a long time ago used to be inherited herself. You know, when a man owed another man money, and if he died, they would say, okay, just give me his daughter and forget about the money. A'udhu billah. Just give me his wife, the widow, and forget about the money. A'udhu billah. What dignity did Islam bring to those women? That is prohibited. It is wrong. It's haram. So much so that even the marriages where someone says, I take, I will marry your sister and you will marry my sister and we will cut out the dowry and so on. That's wrong, completely unacceptable. You can't do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So Islam honored the woman by saying, you know what? You are not a commodity. You are not a mere tool for business. Today, if you take a look at women, they have been reduced to a tool of business. They want to advertise, for example, uh, electric cables, electric cables, and they'll have a naked woman next to it. Doing what? If you touch those type of cables, you'll be burnt. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But they won't. So to advertise anything, they have a woman. Why? Because she doesn't realize we've been reduced to a little tool of attraction. And this is why the women of the West, sometimes when they realize what's going on and they say, you know, I've been brought up just to impress and attract the opposite sex. And I've been made to understand that that's what life is all about. When they see the beauty of Islam, they realize the value for themselves. They're linked with Allah. It's not all about impressing, impressing the opposite sex. But sadly, because of so much of technology that has been misused by us, sometimes even our own daughters and our own women happen to be falling in that, let alone the men. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all. So Allah says a woman will not be sold and she will not be used as a commodity. In fact, she will be acknowledged as a human being by giving her a share, even though she doesn't really need something. Give her. So now, and I'm going to give you an example. A man dies. He leaves behind one son and one daughter. And he leaves behind 75, let's make it interesting. 75 million Qatari riyals. Mashallah. Interesting. So the son gets 50 million and the daughter gets 25 million. And this, the, this daughter, is the closest relative to the daughter, male relative, is that son, my brother. Because she's not married, she, her father's just passed away, she doesn't have any other brothers. This is the brother. So now what happens? Islam says, listen sister, that 25 million is yours. You can do what you want with it. And this guy's 25 million, he has to look after his wife and children with it, and he has to. And on top of that, all your basic requirements, he must provide for you. Allahu Akbar. Who has more money? Divide it. This guy has to divide his 50 million in five people. 10 million each. And that one, 25 million, I'm still sitting with it. And it's mine. Take a look at who got more. But people don't look as deep as that. And they find fault in the Quran because the men are not practicing upon that. We run away from our sisters. My sister, what will happen is when my dad dies, I'll try to steal even the 25 million from her. I will undervalue the property and say, oh sister, that, that property is only 1 million real. She say, oh are you sure? My okay, no problem. And I know it's 10 million. I'm cheating her. She's a woman. A'udhu billah. This is what's going on in the ummah. So people are thinking bad of us. Not because, Allahu Akbar, 
the Quran is wrong, not because, meaning there's not, no flaw in the Quran at all, but because we are the ones who are not practicing upon the teachings of Islam. And we don't even want to know them. So you are supposed to be looking after them. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may He save God.